Hello and welcome. In this video, we will review financial tags feature. That feature was added to Dynamics 365 Finance in version 10.0.32. This feature is an alternative to using financial dimensions. It is more flexible, it doesn't offer validation, and it can be used to code ledger transactions with non-reusable values. So let's take a look at this feature in the system and let's compare it to financial dimensions. So here's the feature itself, we already enabled it. The first point is that financial tags are not part of the account structures. If we open advanced rule structures, for example, and click on add segment, we see that those are the financial dimensions, those are not financial tags. So we cannot build any advanced account structures using financial tags. Now I'll show you the place where we can create financial tags. So it's under general ledger, chart of accounts, financial tags right here. What I have here is four financial tags. Two of those are the type list. And when we select this type, we then need to select from which table the values for that financial tag will be pulled. In this case, the project is pulling from list of projects and the fixed assets is pulling from the fixed asset number. Then I have a third financial tag, which is set to be text. So it's a free text field that will be then used. And the last financial tag is a custom list. I clicked on tag values and that's where I define three categories, A, B, and C. It's worth noting that these financial tags are set up per legal entity, per company, as compared to financial dimensions, which are defined across multiple legal entities. Now, where can we add these financial tags? So I tried it in different places, and the only place where I was able to define financial tags were general journal and global general journal. So let's try it. Navigate to general journal right here, create a new journal, and let's define financial tags right here. So click on financial tags. Here we see four active tags that we have. Let's select the first financial tag. Here's a list of my project IDs that are available in USMF legal entity. So I can select the value. Then there's a fixed asset list. So I can select fixed asset number one. Now there's a point of validation. Can I, for example, enter a value that does not exist in the list of fixed assets? The answer is yes. If I add a letter X, for example, at the end, such fixed asset does not exist, but still I can create a transaction with this tag. So the values are not validated against any list. For the payment reference, remember it was a free text, so I can type in any numbers right here. And for category, it was the list of custom values, so I'm gonna select B, but if I want to, for example, generate a journal with the tag for the category E, which does not exist in my custom list, I still can do that. Now, once we define those tags on the journal header level, we will click on the lines. And now we should talk about defaulting. So can we define defaults for the financial tag values? The answer is not really. We cannot define financial tag values defaults on the master data records such as items, customers, bank accounts, vendors, etc. We can only default financial tags from the journal header to the journal line. And that's what I'm gonna show you now. So what I'm going to select here is, for example, customer, and I'm going to select a customer account, US008. When I do so, I can then click on financial tags, and we will see that this field will automatically be populated with financial tag values that are specified on the journal header. I can change those. So I can, for example, change my project to 005, and then maybe just specify a completely different fixed asset value right here, and then I can close out of it. So now I have changed the defaults from the header on that specific line. Then I'm gonna specify the debit amount, let's say $1, and then I will select the offset account as ledger, and I will select a ledger account that will be used as offset. When I do that, we will see that the offset financial tax are automatically populated, but now they're defaulted from my main account financial tags. Each line that we create will get a default from the journal header and each offset financial tag will get the values from the main account that we select here. So that will continue for any new line that we add to our general journal. What we will do next is we're gonna post it. So posting took relatively short time. That is because there is a very minimal impact on the ledger 
posting process. There is no validation of financial dimension values against advanced account structures, and hence the overall posting process is much more streamlined compared to the same or similar process that we can execute using financial dimensions. Another point that we can make here is that financial tags are designed to be used with non-reusable values. So if you have the values that constantly change for which you don't see a reason to set up a dedicated financial dimension, then the financial tag is definitely as a good option. Now let's take a look at the voucher that we generated. So here are two voucher transactions. And if we scroll to the right, we see that by default, all four active tags are shown. It's worth noting that we can also show inactive financial tags. By default, they're hidden, but if you have any inactive tags that you would like to display on any voucher transaction, you can click right here and you can show inactive financial tags option and you can set it to update. Another feature that I like is that I can then add tags to already posted voucher transactions. What I will do is I will select two transactions that I just generated, click on edit voucher and edit internal voucher data. The reason why this editing is possible is because financial tax are considered to be internal data. For example, you cannot use a trial balance to split based on the financial tax. So here I have two transactions. I will select the both and I will click on bulk update selected records. So this would allow me to mass update multiple voucher transactions in the same operation. So here I have description that I can modify, but what I'm interested in, for example, I want to change the project for both transaction to 007. Now you see that the financial tag project got the new value 007. I can then update the category, for example, and set a new value of G. Now I have updated two tags for those two transactions. Once I'm happy with the result, I can enter a reason for the edit or leave it blank and then click on OK. So that is how easy it is to update the financial tags even on the posted ledger transactions. Here is that transaction and scroll to the right. We see a new value for the project and new value for category. Now reporting. As I said before, you can generate a trial balance to view balances for the tag value, the way we can do it for financial dimension, for example. The values for these financial tags are only visible in basically two forms. One of them is the voucher transactions, which is the form I'm on right now, or you can also see these tags from main account or transactions for the main account. So, so we select the main account in the list right here, and then we can click on transactions. And on the right, we see our financial tax. Voucher transactions and transactions from the main account are the only two forms where those financial tax currently will be visible. But the advantage of it is that we can still open that form in Excel, for example, and then edit it via the Excel add-in. So you can generate a report in Excel or a Power BI report that will be pulling from this form right here. So you can build any report in these tools using financial tax. Now let's go back to financial tax again. And there are a few points. As I said before, you cannot delete the financial tax. You can see that the delete button is not even on this form. We can only click on new, but we cannot delete. So it's not possible to, to delete new tax. What you can do though, is you can rename the tags. So for example, here in the category, I can rename it to class, for example. So that is possible. We can also change the tag type from custom list to something else. It is also possible, but please note that any ledger transactions posted with that old tag would remain in place. I have that ultimate flexibility of renaming my tag, but the old transaction that will be there would still show the value from the previous tag. And then the last point I'm going to say is that we cannot delete tags, but we can easily deactivate them. So if I'm going to select my class right here, click on activate, select the class, move it to inactive financial tax and click on deactivate. It's going to schedule a periodic job. So we should give it some time for it to take an effect. Once the job stopped executing, we'll see that the checkbox is now gone for the class. So this is a inactive tag. And if we navigate to voucher transactions, Scroll to the right, we can see that the class tag is gone now because it's an active tag, but we can show it by clicking on these three dots right here, showing active financial tags. 
select the class and click on update. And now we see the class. So in summary, guys, that's all I wanted to show to you today. Let's just summarize it. So the tags is a new feature that is an alternative to financial dimensions. Uh, the tag values are set up per legal entity. We have an ability to edit uh, tags after the transactions have been posted. We cannot delete tags. We can only deactivate them. The tags cannot be included in trial balance, but they can be seen in two forms, uh, voucher transactions and transactions from the main account. Uh, the tags are well suited for use with non-reusable values for which it does not make sense to set up financial dimensions. There is no validation on the posting, so any value will be accepted. Defaulting is only happening from the journal header to journal line, and so far it's only general journal. No other journals so far have financial tax functionality. We can build some Excel reports or Power BI reports using these financial tax. And the impact on the posting process is very minimal just because there is no validation, as I said. Overall, I think it's a great, great alternative. Well done, Microsoft. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. Until the next time.